Hi, my name is Mike Bergeron. I'm a senior product manager at Panasonic, and I'm here to talk about Keros. It's our new ITIP processing platform that is at the core of our smart studio. And um, first, let me um, describe what Keros is doing and how it came to be. Now, the main thing we're doing with Keros is bringing in three innovations. The first one is being able to control everything from the Kairos core, from the Kairos interface, and all that over a regular IP network, and um, really building on what we've been doing for years with our uh, PTZ cameras and, and many other uh, robotic devices. Second is to take full advantage of the SMPTE 2110 IP network to manage all the inputs and outputs as uncompressed IP video. And this will allow us, allows us to have things like multicast and really build on the flexibility of the system. And third is take advantage of the fact that everything is running virtualized on the GPU. And so we've got an unprecedented amount of, of flexibility there in that we can build many more scenes and have as many MEs as we'd like and build as many layers for those. And all that is constructed with an intuitive GUI. So it's very easy to learn how to use. Now, we don't have to go right to 2110 with a Cairo system. It is possible to work in SDI and build a full system using SDI and HDMI. And uh, we, we make that easy. But when you do that, you still have that 2110 NIC connection on the Cairo's core. So you can add some IP as you go or go to an all IP system in the future. Now, as you build on the IP network, that's going to allow you to add more inputs and outputs as you add more rooms to the system or your organization grows and you want to expand what you're bringing into your production or where you're bringing out your production. And that can even go as far as to duplicate an entire studio so I can manage two studios from one location. And everything is possible in both studios if I extend the network to both places. Now, another nice thing about that uh, GPU and the flexibility of the GUI is that I can build custom uh, screens or custom looks for those screens to support something like a 32 by 9 wide um, LED wall or edge blended projectors or portrait and landscape. And um, all of those things can be built as native rasters. And so I don't need to include a screens processor to do those. I can just treat them as if they were normal video and uh, send them out uh, customized to the screens that I have or screens that I'll have in the future. So each of those scenes that I build is an unlimited number of layers. And so I can just be as creative as I like with that. And my delay can be as low as one frame uh, because of the efficiency of how we're getting everything off of the GPU. And the ultimate performance of how many layers, how many MEs, how many everything I add is just driven by the power of the specific GPU in each Kairos core. Now the Kairos core is at the center and that is the mainframe. And the creator GUI is client software that runs on a connected machine on that control network. Now, with the Kairos Core and the Kairos Creator GUI, I have everything I need to run a system. But we also have a 2ME 24 crosspoint style, a uh, very, very, very high quality professional panel. And I can add as many of those as I want to the system. But uh, instead of continuing to talk about it, we're going to go to our remote lab in Harrison, New Jersey, where uh, Harry is controlling our smart studio with Kairos at the center of it. Thank you, Mike. Um, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, so in our, uh, in our lab in Harris, New Jersey, we have set up a smart studio that there, where you will see several monitors that are set up um, ultimately, uh, you know, running on, as the core uh, being Keros. So uh, the monitors that you see on the left is our multi-view one um, that is running a 16 by 9 uh, production while the multi-view 2 is running at 32 by 9 production. So the application here is that let's say you have a venue and uh, in that venue you have an LED board as the backdrop on the stage uh, and at the same time you are doing an iMac or even managing remote feeds. The point is that Keros can manage both of the screens from the single platform. 
Um, so uh, the monitors that you see below the multi-viewers are the uh, output of that 32 by nine, showing you sort of the left and right, uh, 16 by nine, uh, you know, on the left and the right, making it 32 by nine, kind of giving you an idea how the video is actually being processed. Uh, and then we have the Keros uh, control. Um, this is a control panel that is a sort of a, a 24 cross point uh, style uh, control panel, but it's quite, quite flexible and you can do a lot with it and manage all your outputs uh, from the hardware panel. And then next to it is the, uh, the software uh, control, uh, which is referred as the Keros creator. Now, uh, Keros creator is a, uh, something that is um, absolutely must uh, to run for a switcher while the Keros control, the physical hardware panel is optional. Let's take a look at what we have in the equipment rack. Um, so there we have uh, uh, the rack monitors that are set up to show you the uh, latency from input to output uh, of it being only one frame of a, of a delay. Uh, so again, the uh, right monitor that you see is the actual source and the left is the output uh, processed through the switcher. Uh, below is the prototype of the Keros Core. Um, uh, ultimately, the product that is shipping is going to be a Panasonic branded product that Mike showed earlier in the images. Um, but this is uh, uh, ultimately an Intel-based uh, uh, Intel CPU, NVIDIA-based GPU, uh, and Mellanox is the one who is providing the network card. Um, uh, so Keros Core, uh, ultimately, as you can imagine, it's comprised of uh, many of the uh, technologies that has been released uh, very recently. Uh, and it, it also is running on a Linux-based uh, OS, which is a highly customized version of Linux. Uh, below the server you see is the, uh, uh, the 2110 sort of IOs. So we have the uh, Mellanox high-speed network switch with 25 gig and 100 gig connectivity. Uh, we have the leader sync generator, uh, which is outputting PTP sync, uh, sync signal to the network switch. And at the same time, it's also outputting a Junlock signal to the, uh, to the cameras that may not necessarily be IP compatible just yet. Um, so in a, uh, in, with this uh, sort of connectivity, you will be able to bring in IP signals and SDI signals uh, sort of uh, in a hybrid uh, world. Um, and and Keros can be definitely be compatible uh, for those scenarios. Now for any projects that you may not necessarily need IP flexibility and you want to stick to let's say simple SDI IO, uh, we are also offering the DeltaCast modules, which has a variety of connectivity from SDI, HDMI, DisplayPort, and you will be able to use just the DeltaCast modules to bring your video uh, inputs and then uh, send outputs processed by the switcher. Now, uh, at the uh, bottom of the rack, uh, what you will see is that there is um, uh, what you will see is that there is um, a, a gigabit control uh, uh, switch. So. Uh, Pretty much you will be managing two different networks, the high-speed network uh, and the gigabit ethernet. Uh, and then I'm using the Aja Key Pros to sort of take the video out from the switcher and then feed it into, sorry, feed it, uh, video out from the Key Pros and feed it into the switcher as my sources. So here you have uh, eight uh, 3G signals of which two of them are blended into a 32 by nine uh, sort of a background um, that eventually you will see uh, that I'm using in my 32 by nine LED uh, screen outputs. So uh, going back to our monitors, now the feed that you are seeing um, is being processed from um, uh, Keros itself. So here I can choose to send uh, the feed that you know, you're know you looking at, which is a camera feed, or I can send uh, the multi-view itself. So here is again our that 16 by nine multi-view um, and then the 32 by nine multi-view um, or the UI itself. Now, uh, when you look at the UI for the first time, it looks quite simple, familiar, uh, where you have, let's say your program bus, your preview bus, your transitions, your cut and auto and a sort of a soft fader. So overall you have, let's say one deck uh, here and then another deck that's a, a bow. Uh, on this particular deck, I'm running a, a scene called Kairos Meeting um, where uh, you know, pretty much that can be changed uh, in the software as uh, and very, very flexibly. So with that, I could be managing multiple scenes from the same UI and for uh, heavier productions where you have multiple outputs running uh, or needs to be managed, you can have multiple instances of the Keros creator uh, running at the same time. So you could have as many software um, you know, uh, instances of the Keros creator running on the network or as many hardware instances on the network. Let's take a look at how a particular scene is built. Now, uh, most of the switchers have terms like MEs. 
in this uh, system, we have outputs and scenes. So for example, here is our, my 32 by nine output, 16 by nine output, my Kairos meeting, and then feeding into this meeting are my scenes. So here is, let's say, Kairos scene. And one of the scene is, refer, you know, that I have prepared is uh, GUI, multi-V1, multi-V2. Um, now, as you can imagine, you know, these scenes are layer-based um, already. And, you know, each of these layers are completely flexible and scalable. So if I want to make any changes to these scenes, I can do so uh, directly from the right pane here. Um, let me actually send you this feed so you can follow as I'm making changes. So again, that scene is that multi-view uh, on the top and then the UI on the bottom. Uh, if I wanted to, let's say, grab the multi-viewer and, you know, position it somewhere else, or if I wanted to change the size of it, you know, that's quite flexible. Control Z also <laughs> works on a switcher. Uh, if you don't want it to be visible, you simply hide it. Uh, if you want to change the source, uh, right-click on it, select the source. Uh, you can select the scene as a source, any inputs, effects inputs, RAM recorders, uh, clips, clip layers, stills, color mats, or internal resources like multi-viewer one or two. Uh, so that's one way to select the source. Other one, uh, other way is simply just clicking on these uh, cross points that I have here. So uh, as I, you know, just click on them, you will see that the output is is actually cutting. Now, um, let's say if a director comes and says, "Hey, instead of cutting, can you do any transitions there?" Uh, well, on a normal switcher, you would have to sort of pass it through another ME and then feed it into this output. Uh, to offer that transition. In this system, you simply enable a B bus, and now you have your A bus and a B bus, so you can do any sort of transitions uh, that you would like. But then one step beyond, we also have dissolved enabled on every single sort of layer. Um, and with the dissolve, you can choose the effect that you want to have. So you can choose from, let's say, any of the mix effects, wipe effects, DVEs, or a user effect like a replay wipe. So let's say we'll simply just select a mix effect here, and now as I cut between my sources, you will see that it's actually blending. It's actually fading. Um, so um, overall, quite uh, a flexible switcher. You know, with this particular feature, every single layer in the system can be a, um, an ME. Um, let's look at, look, at, look at a bit more complex scene. So here is a, a three box uh, wide scene. Um, that three box wide, uh, let me actually put this back to my normal multi-viewer one. Um, so that three box wide uh, is actually the top right uh, scene in the multi-viewer two where you have the background, sort of uh, three text and then uh, three boxes. Now uh, in this system, you know, we are composing that scene as a single output. So if I wanted to change something, you know, I can easily change it and be, be really, really flexible. Uh, whereas many of the other systems, I may not be able to do so. Um, again, we are treating that output as a single output and not as two separate sort of MEs. Um, in terms of transitions, uh, again, that uh, three box scene, uh, I have a variety of layers uh, that we sort of saw earlier, but then uh, transition wise, you know, here's an example of, let's say those three boxes going in and out or the titles that are going in and out. Um, and uh, in terms of effects, again, a variety of those effects that we discussed earlier, but then in addition, you can also choose the mode uh, for these effects. Um, overall, uh, quite, quite flexible uh, sort of uh, uh, switcher uh, that we have here, uh, live production switcher. Um, now, of course, uh, in the limited time, uh, I want to show you more, but uh, uh, let's take a look at what else we have. Uh, so we have ability to play back stills. We have ability to play back uh, sort of uh, uh, clips. And again, these are uncompressed clips. We also have compressed clip players. Uh, we have some color mats that are built in uh, that could be used for creative backgrounds or even border loops. Um, and then uh, we also have the ability to control um, any IP uh, or HTTP based uh, system. So earlier you saw me controlling the robotic, robotic systems and that was uh, being controlled uh, from Kairos itself. We also have the ability to control PTZ cameras. Uh, these are Panasonic PTZ cameras that, are, that you will be able to control. And to tie it all together, we have macros. So the button that you see uh, over here, once I record, once I start recording a macro, um, any action that I do in the UI gets recorded as an action. Um, so here's a list of action that I recorded, for example, for that macro. 
So overall, there's a lot to discuss and a um, lot to show. Uh, but for now, that's all the time that we have. So everyone, thank you for joining. And I hope you enjoyed the virtual show. And uh, feel free to contact us. Thank you very much for your time.